Hello everyone, I'm Jessica and today is going to be my book haul rewind for the month of April. <laughs> That's the month we're in. Good golly, that was hard. It is April 13th today. I was just looking at some videos that I needed to film for the month and realized I never filmed this or posted it obviously because I can't post it if I haven't filmed it yet. So here I am to film this video. If you're new here or if you haven't seen one of these videos yet, basically this is just another TBR game that I've been playing to hold myself accountable for the massive book hauls that I've made over the past couple of years. Basically I'm just going to go through, tell you which books I bought in both 2017 and 2018 in the months of April and if I've read them or if I haven't read them. And spoiler alert, this month I've read them all. So it's not as fun as like what's coming up. I know I said that April and May were the fun months, but I think it's June and July. I think July there's like 52 books. There's some fun months to come. So I know this is a little uneventful, but there's some fun months to come. So let's get to April of 2017. I have five books from 2017 and one book from 2018. I will not be giving a full synopsis of any of these. Actually, you know what? I will this month because they're so short. They're so short I will. Normally I don't. Normally I, I advise you to see the original haul, but there's only five books. I can just go over these. It's not, not a big deal. But I will link the videos from 17 and 18 in the description box below as well as in the cards if you want to see the whole video. I don't know why you would because I'm going to tell you what they're about, but whatever. The first is Wind Witch by Susan Jenner. This is the second book in the Witchland series. If you're new here, you don't know that I talk about this series a lot, but I do. And also you can see a lot of it right here. Yeah, I like this series. This series is about a girl by the name of Safi who is a truth witch. And that means that she has a power that is not necessarily well known in her world and it is very coveted and she's on the run with her best friend Iz who is a thread witch and they are running from different countries that essentially want to capture Sophie and use her powers against the other countries or kill her so the other countries can't use her powers against them. Basics. This series is super fun, super imaginative, has lots of world building, really great characters. I love all of like the Easter eggs. Every time you read this series, you get things that you didn't catch the first time that play into so much that's happening in the future. This is one of the best written fantasy series that I have ever read. I absolutely love it. If you can't tell by the US editions, plus an extra edition of Blood Witch, plus the UK editions, I don't have a problem, I swear. The next book is The Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. This is the first book in the Trials of Apollo series. Um, if you can't tell from behind me again, but on this side this time, I have a thing for Rick Riordan too. So this series is a follow-up not only to Percy Jackson, but also to the series that came after Percy Jackson, which is the Heroes of Olympus series. And then you get Trials of Apollo without spoiling the 87 books that come before this. This book follows the character Apollo who is a Greek god and he did some bad shit in the first two book series and he's being punished for it by his father Zeus and he is turned into a mortal and he has to live as like a 16 year old mortal who has like pimples and stuff and he hates it because he's always been like the most gorgeous god of them all. And so you get to follow Apollo as he's tied to another demigod and he has to basically be her servant. And it is like the coolest book series ever. I absolutely love these. It took me a little longer to get into these. Um, there's three of them out so far. It took me longer to get into these than it did like Percy Jackson, but Apollo is definitely a different flagship character than what you get in Percy Jackson, Heroes of Olympus, Kane Chronicles, Magnus Chase, what's that other one called? Yeah, he's definitely a different type of main character, but he's a really fun read and I love, I just love that you see characters from previous stories and there's just so much mashing of everything together and I have no idea how Rick keeps everything contained and confined, but I just, I love Uncle Rick and his writing. It's great. Next is Empress of a Thousand Skies by Rhoda Baeza. This is the first book in this series. The second book is also out. I read it. I love them both. Hi. 
hi! This series follows a girl by the name of Ri who is the last of her royal line. Her family was killed when she was a small child. She was brought up outside of the main village because they wanted to keep her protected and so that she could one day succeed to the throne and she's leaving this small village to go to take her place on the throne and her ship once again explodes because I that's how her family died. I should have told you that part I guess. Eh. Uh, but Ri escapes and she goes on this quest to avenge her parents' death, take control of her throne and fix her whole world. This series, I don't read a lot of sci-fi. Probably this is like the first like for sure sci-fi that I've ever read. I think I just said like 1600 times but you're used to that by now. And I really enjoyed it. I really like both of these books and it was a really good series. I like Baeza's writing. I hope she writes more because I want to read more. Okay. Then we have Robert Michael's The Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. You've probably seen this recently on my channel because I tried to read it in March and I DNF'd it. This follows a detective as he is trying to figure out what kind of a creature it is that is going through his town and kidnapping people. And this essentially is like a monster type book where a wendigo is the monster and you have to like figure out who the wendigo is because they're kind of like werewolves. They can be humans but they also can transform into the wendigo on certain times. And there's been Wendigos in lots of different uh, popular culture TV shows, Supernatural and the original Charmed. Don't knock the new Charmed until you've tried it. It's actually really good. I really like it. Okay. Okay. I really liked the theory of this and I liked some aspects of it, but I read like the beginning and the end and I didn't really read the middle because it wasn't really for me, but hey, maybe it's for you. Then we have The Scarlet Reaper, the first book and the Architects of the Gifted. This is by... Cameron Seacross, which I believe his name is now Cam Wolfshot. This is from back in the day. This is an old version, an old cover. Um, he's changed his name since then. This book is about a boy named Carter who learns that he has this magical ability and he wants to save the girl and win the day. Save the day, win the girl? Does it matter? It was decent. I liked it. Um, I did not mention also Ben Sanders. Cameron Cross, both author tubers. So. so you can also check them out on booktube and author tube. Those are the five from April of 2017. There's only one from April of 2018. Again, which I've also read, and that is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This book takes place, I think, in like the late 80s, early 90s. And it follows Abby and Gretchen. They are best friends. And they are teenagers and they have like this weird party night and Gretchen kind of starts to act kind of weird, kind of like she's possessed maybe and that's why they have to have an exorcism. Yeah, that's the whole point of the book. And I actually really enjoyed this book. There are some things like if you are familiar with exorcisms, if you've watched a lot of TV shows about exorcisms and like things that your body would go through during a demon possession, your body would go through during a demon possession then like a lot of the things for you won't be as like interesting it was interesting but it was like okay I know where this is going I know that she's possessed I know that the, like it wasn't surprising for me I guess and I think if you don't know a lot of that it may be more interesting for you than what it was for me but I don't know why is this sound like a wrap-up it's not supposed to be but it kind of is but hi okay I'm gonna put this down now either way I liked it so what's not to love about an exorcism with giant I can't say that because it might give too much away. Just to say there's like one really gross scene in here that involves a giant bug. Several giant bugs. So yeah, those are my TBR Rewind for April 2017-2018, this glorious selection. Like I said, I realized that this one was like a little boring because I read everything so it wasn't like a big secret and there were only six books. But I just looked, next month there are 23 and they're in various degrees of red, not red, unhauled, etc. So next one should be more fun. Just enjoy this one for like me, obviously, and then we'll go to next month. And wow, I am like really hyper today. So I just watched this movie, you don't care. I just watched this movie on Netflix called The Perfect Date and it stars Noah Centineo, AKA Peter Kavinsky from To All The Boys I Love Before, so obviously I had to watch it. I, I don't know, it's just like put me in some kind of mood. Like I'm really hyper right now. Like I could live with more Peter Kavinsky in my life. Of course, Peter Kavinsky 10 years later because I'm old and that's kind of gross, but yeah. So anyway, that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos like this one because I forgot to film it on the weekends. So until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.